Welcome everybody to episode 136 of the China Show. Yes. Uh, this is a breaking episode. We're going to get directly into the main thing: the Zhengzhou uh, protests and uprisings that are happening right now. It's very important. It's a huge topic, and it's something that affects not only the whole of China but also you. So we're going to get right into it. We do have our usual segments of the show, but we'll be uh, doing all the what's new and all the funny stuff and so on after the main segment. So if you can just bear with us. So without any further ado, let's just get right into it. And maybe we can um, explain to people what's going on behind us here. So first off, what I want everyone to know is we're going to be focusing mostly on this area called Zhengzhou, which is in mm-hmm. central China yep. in Hunan, a very Han centric, very like pro-China area of China. Yeah, very nationalistic. Very nationalistic, right? Yeah. Now, we're going to be focusing on that. However, what you have to know is that there are handfuls now of these types of scenarios happening directly around the country at, the, at this very moment. Yeah. And the Chinese government's doing its very best to make sure that you don't hear about it. Mm-hmm. But the initial leaks, all the footage and stuff came out from Zhengzhou, so we'll be focusing on that. So first off, I just want you guys to get the scope of maybe what you're about to see. Yeah. <clears throat> Here's somebody on, on the highway passing through a toll gate, and you can see all of the police vehicles that are currently heading in to take control of the uh, protests in Zhengzhou. This is police and SWAT team yeah. and special police, which is... Yeah, those buses uh, are just busing police. Yeah, um, busing police. You have the armored police. You have all the, basically all of the uh, terror squad, terrorist squad, you know, that you yeah. have in China. Just get this. I want you guys to get the scale. Yeah, those are military trucks as well over yeah. there, which are going to have troops in the back. Um, Just get the scale of what we're looking at. See those at. buses over there? It looks like a passenger bus. That's right. not a passenger bus. You see that stripe down the side? Yeah. That is a, a police bus. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's not like, oh, we're sending vacationers down here. It's also not like, oh, you know, we're sending 20 cops to go deal with a uh, little protest. Right. No, they're mobilizing the on mass. This is a lot of police and uh, military and whatever else that are currently heading to, you know, suppress the uprising. And we'll explain to you the origins of the uprising. We'll explain to you uh, what's going on with that shortly. But one thing you need to know is that this um, is all surrounding the Foxconn factory, which has over 200,000, as we mentioned before, uh, people working there. I mean, just look at the amount of police vehicles and SWAT. That's an armored SWAT vehicle yeah. over there, that black one. I've seen them myself yep, many times, too. yeah. Um, it, you know, that's, They use those as like a show of presence. They'll yeah. park one in like a square and they're like, oh, Like shit, at the border, you'd there. see them if you cross yeah. the border in China, you see them, you know, in Lohu and Shenzhen, they yeah. have them parked there and stuff. Um, but yeah, this is a huge, huge amount of law enforcement and so on heading over there. So anyway, um, the, this you, you may have seen some footage. We're going to show you pretty much everything here. We're not censoring no, we're not. Any, anything here. So, um, oh yeah, you know. shout out to everyone that has the uh, generosity in their heart to support the channel, whether it's on Patreon or it's on uh, Super Chats or whatever. Because this episode, I I can promise you, hand on heart, will be demonetized 100%. after what we're going to show. Yeah, hundred percent. We're not censoring anything here. We, we you need to see what's actually going on here in China. Yes. So. Here, you can see the clashes between the, um, the police there in the Dabai uniforms. The Dabai means big white. These are the stormtroopers that you can see right behind us here. I think there might be riot some... riot shields. Yeah, there might be some confusion. You might think of the white, you know, Dabai, the uh, COVID pandemic staff, mm. uh, as not police, but as hospital staff. But here, you got to understand in China, when they send these police out into these crowds, they're all in hazmat suits. Especially since this is all about zero COVID. Yes. Okay, and the the whole point of these riots is is revolving around the fact that there are COVID outbreaks. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to take it back to here um, and explain to you what's been going on. We reported, uh, was it last week or the week before, we reported on the fact that you had all of these people fleeing the Foxconn factory there. Yeah. Okay, and this was because of COVID quarantine had locked people in their dorms. Yeah. And allegedly, uh, what was it, eight people in one dorm died. Yeah, allegedly. Just allegedly. Like, that's not something that's been confirmed, but that is what sparked off this mass exodus because people have been stuck in because of these quarantines and uh, there was problems with food shortage and things like that. And then when the rumors, whether it's true or not, that these people had died in their dorm spread amongst all the workers, 
a lot of them were like, this is it, I'm out of here. Yeah. But because of the zero COVID restrictions, they couldn't take buses, they couldn't take trains, they couldn't take public transport, so they walked. And we showed you the footage of them walking down the highways uh, to escape this zero COVID lockdown and uh, all this nonsense. So what happened was Foxconn then offered uh, fairly handsome um, employment packages to new employees mm -hmm. Because, of course, now they have to make up for the loss of employees, mm -hmm. the, guys, the guys that were like, I'm out, and they fled. So they offered quite a lot. And so a, a whole whack of new employees turned up, and then something uh, went wrong with the, uh, the employment contract because they had been told they would be receiving a certain amount, and then it turns out that uh, then they were told they're not going to receive a certain amount. And then the people that had stayed there were really getting annoyed with the fact that the new people coming in um, hadn't quarantined and now zero COVID starts spreading. And this is, I mean, the COVID started spreading and this is the genesis of it all. There was a wage dispute. There was a, a miscommunication that had everybody disgruntled in the first place. But then when you throw in the zero COVID, where it's all of a sudden, now we're going to be locked down because some people have COVID now and everyone's going to be stuck here. So as soon as this whole thing about the zero COVID picked up and people realized that they were getting screwed over and we're about to be locked down and incarcerated once again like prisoners, they were like, this is enough. Yeah. Why don't you run the footage? Because I have every clip Yeah. in order. And it, we don't have to like give you a blow by but We can tell you why this transpired as yeah. this plays out. And for those of you who are possibly listening, what you're seeing here is you're seeing the, the workers are picking up steel poles. And I'm thinking a lot of these steel poles are coming from those makeshift barriers yep. that were set up to trap them in their dorms yep. and stuff. And look, they're carrying Chinese flags. And you see, this is what the, the government doesn't want. Yes. Is they're now using their nationalism because, you know, in the Chinese national anthem, it says, stand up those who refuse to be slaves, yeah. right? Yeah. And that's part of it. Yeah. And I guess the Chinese government's regretting that they allowed that to stay in the national anthem because they, well, they want actually, everyone to be slaves. And they actually banned that line for a little while yeah. because people were using it as a protest anthem. Exactly. Uh, we'll explain the psyche behind the nationalism behind these these protests as well, but this is towards the beginning. Yeah. And what you're seeing is in, in its infancy. Um, what happened was because of all of it, you know, the wage dispute thing and all this kind of stuff is a really good smoke and mirror campaign mm. to take away and divert from bad policy. Yes. Because bad policy is really what got us here in the first place. I need you guys to understand something. This isn't just in Zhengzhou. There's uprisings in Guangzhou, Chongqing, and handfuls of other cities around the, uh, the country because people have had enough. You're yeah. th almost three years into this thing, yeah. getting locked down, getting not getting good food supplies, getting your code, your QR code, which can be green, means you can walk around and do whatever you want, yellow, which means that you're in a, in a high-risk area, yeah. and then red means that you or someone nearby is a, has a, is a COVID patient, Yes. and so you get locked down where you are. People are freaking out. They're like, yeah. how you can't keep me in this in this spot, right? Yeah. And what they did was they were manipulating people's QR codes. Yes. And changing them to red to stop protests. Yeah. And this is now, I, I hope you guys, if you're new here, you'll understand. This was never about COVID in China. No. China, the Chinese government doesn't care about COVID. What they care about is the ability to stop any and all dissent with the with a switch of a QR code. Yes. That's, that's what it. we're seeing here. We're seeing mm -hmm. revolts against that. And the smoke and mirror campaign right now from the Chinese government is to say, oh, Foxconn is bad. Yeah, the uh, factory. It's a Taiwanese company. Look how bad they are. Uh, this is somehow America's fault. <laughs> when... Isn't Taiwan supposed to be a part of China? Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, According to them. <laughs> but it's a smoke and mirror campaign because what it is, is diversion to say, oh, this is a company's policy issue. This isn't a national policy yeah. issue. And what's happening, this, this threshold is being crossed to where the Chinese government has made sure that they never get blamed for yes. stuff like this. Mm -hmm. And it's blamed on people or countries or companies. Yeah. And then when it surpasses that, when you see the flags come out and you say, hey, this is not what China's supposed to be. Yeah. China's supposed to be you know, our proud, strong country. You can't do this to us, yeah. local pandemic workers. Yeah. That information gets into the right hands. These people aren't stupid, yeah. right? All you need is some people with a megaphone to stand up and say, hey, this is coming from the top. This yeah. is a bad national policy that's meant to keep us down. Yeah. We need to overthrow, just like our national anthem says, yes. overthrow the people that are making us into slaves. And that's what you're seeing now. You're seeing a mix between disgruntled people that just can't handle it anymore mm -hmm. and people saying, 
wait a minute, this can't be a forever policy for yeah. us. It, it's hopeless. It feels hopeless. Yeah. Right. By the way, that is a police car that they're overturning. You see, it says Gong An on the yeah. side, which means public security. Um, uh, it, in those, in these kind of areas, you don't see fancy police cars. You know, that's what you'd expect to see. I just want to read some comments. Sure. Oh, and this is a wait, worker revolt. Sorry, against, wait, just okay. before you do that. We also have to make clear that the government remotely changed all of the protesters' yes. QR codes to red. So yeah. imagine you're on the fence and, you know, you've got some disgruntled people and they're like, screw this. You know, we don't want, we don't want to be trapped in here with uh, zero COVID. Let's go out and make a noise. And then suddenly your phone turns red. That means if your QR code is red, that means you are a prisoner. Sure. That means you're screwed. Yeah. There's no way out of it. You have to be taken to a quarantine camp. You have to be locked in a small yeah. room for like weeks on end. And no one ever knows how long because no. they keep changing the rules. So you as a person, you're like, screw this. I don't want my freedom taken away. And everyone else's freedom is being taken away at the same time. That's why you've got what's happening here right now. Is right. everyone standing up and saying, screw this. We do right. not want to be put in jail for something we didn't do. I, the only reason I said that, I'm not, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not going to break up the flow of this because we're still reporting on this, but there's, mm -hmm. a, there's a comment here, and this is more than one now. Yeah. This is a worker revolt against a factory rather than a countrywide revolt. No. Okay. <laughs> Explain to me why the Chinese police and the Chinese military are here beating um, these workers. If it's a worker revolt... Mm -hmm. You know, it's a different story because then you'd have the factory security would be there. It'd be a, a, a like a, there'd be a negotiation with the bosses. You know, it'll be like, a, hey, we're going to have a strike. Right. OK. We've seen strikes. Yes. And strikes in China are very different. And it usually involves people standing with a banner or kowtowing or kneeling down or something like that. It's a very different sort of a protest. We've seen it ourselves because... Remember, protests are not allowed. Why do you think they're smashing that zero COVID booth, that COVID testing booth over there? Uh, it's not that, because that of person a... I just read was a woman, by the way. Makes sense. Yeah. Why would it be a worker dispute? If it's a worker dispute, why are they smashing the zero COVID? I mean, the COVID testing stations. Yeah. Why is it? See, look at the guy smashing the COVID. To... That's not a worker dispute. That's not oh my wages. You know, yeah. that's my I'm sick and tired I... of this they're, garbage. They're going up against the police. Yes, the SWAT team. They are not protesting their boss to yeah. give them a, a red envelope. They're not money. like, more pay, no. we're here to stay. It's not it, that. It doesn't matter how things start, too. Yeah. It's an exacerbation of things. Also, I'd like to uh, commentate on the people out there that are running uh, disinformation campaigns for China to say yeah. this is an isolated incident against Foxconn's bosses. Mm -hmm. What you're doing is a massive disservice to all the other protests that are happening. Because if this is a worker dispute, then why is it happening in Guangzhou? Yeah, which is like... There's no Foxconn So there. far away. Where's the Foxconn factory in Guangzhou? Yeah, exactly. It's not about Foxconn. It's not about a wage dispute. It's about people getting sick and tired of having their freedom taken away because of this ridiculous zero COVID policy, yeah. right? I mean, look at what they're doing here. Remember, this is not like security forces for the factory. You saw the police cars and the SWAT teams and the stuff come in. This is the government coming in to control the people. Yes. Okay. I love that right now we have a disinformation bot campaign in our chat live, guys. This is why you're at the right place to yeah. follow this mm -hmm. footage because we have people paid to go stop this, this stream right now. Yeah. I don't and, want you to see this. And what they're trying to tell you is that, oh, it's just a wage dispute. This is not a wage dispute. Okay. These are people sick and tired of their freedoms being taken away. Yes. And if there was no zero COVID policy, we'd see if there was a wage dispute, it would not require the whole police and army from all surrounding provinces to be sent in to quell it. Yes. It would literally be a bunch of people unsatisfied and they do a sit in, they do a strike, they'd get their wages. This Everyone... is like, screw this. There are people fleeing on the highways. Yeah. You know what I mean? Trying on foot. Everyone in the chat, please say October. hi to the paid government trolls that yeah. are in the chat right now to, to try to sway mm -hmm. your opinion. Those are police riot shields that you're seeing there. Yep. All right. Those are not like look at this worker. Factory. Look at this worker dispute. Yes. It must Ooh. just be about their low wages. Yeah. No. Look, not the lockdown they're, and starvation. They are breaking down barriers yeah. and smashing COVID testing booths. That's got nothing to do with wages. The barriers are there to keep them from going anywhere because, hey, now you're under quarantine. The testing booths are the things that they torture them with every day with all their stupid, you got to test twice a day or whatever it is, get a, a Q-tip shoved down your nose or your throat so far that it, you know, that you feel like you, I don't know. I'll pause it there. Okay, I was waiting for this clip. Okay, so um, what you see on the left here, 
yeah. is a live stream. So this is what happened. Yeah. I went through the uh, kind of Chinese internet record slash archives until stuff got wiped. Yeah. And I talked to some people that were there. Hmm. And so what happened was there was a, and this is rare. This is yeah. super rare, but this is the first time I've seen a protest inspire other ones because of the Chinese internet. And I'll tell you why. In China, they can shut down anything on the fly. Yeah. And if something is being shown, it's being allowed to be shown. Yeah. So if you see something that's like, wow, I can't believe they're allowing that, it's allowed for a reason. The Chinese yes. government literally has, basically you can picture it like a big button that says, yeah. shut this topic down. Yes. Shut this word down. They'll block yes. words, phrases, mm -hmm. live streams, areas. They can yeah. black out a whole area. They shut down live TV. I mean, you know, you're watching the TV and suddenly CNN will air something or something and they quickly yeah. cut it. On the internet. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Yeah. it's playing like some... Some Nokia random advert from like 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, what happened was there was about five, between five and six minutes mm -hmm. of live streams that were coming on Kwai Show on uh, other live stream apps. Those are right? live streaming Doyen, services. In, right? yeah. in China. Mm -hmm. And they people, because people were confused. People... Yeah. They weren't there to be like, I'm a clandestine reporter here on the ground. No. They were just whipping out their phones and saying, holy crap, what's going on? And in the live streams, they would say, I don't understand what's going on. And people in the crowd would say things like, oh, they're actually protesting because everyone's getting locked down. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, get them. Go get yeah, those yeah. die by, die yeah, by. Yeah, them exactly. go, yeah. go mess up the cops. And they yeah. actually, you could watch and listen to people's opinions being shifted on the ground. Yeah. And so for those five or six minutes, you had a whole country that had the ability to go see these no-name channels live streaming this event yes. that weren't there to plan to do it, just yeah. were shocked that something was happening. And it took five or six minutes to shut everything down. And of course they shut everything down, they sent in all the cops. And they the did, but in that process, mm -hmm. it was enough to get people riled up, whether maybe those people are from Zhengzhou, but they live in a different city, to start their own kind of thing. And we saw this happen in Chongqing a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and you know, continuing to happen in Guangzhou. So this was a kind of like little spark that mm -hmm. set off, not a national revolution, yeah. but a big enough thing to where it was not an isolated incident anymore. And that's why you're seeing campaigns from, from Chinese state media and disinformation campaigns from foreigners that work, when I say yeah. foreigners, like American, let's say an American that works for the Chinese government, yes. will put out a disinformation campaign to say, this is really, like, why would someone put a story out about this? This is really actually about Foxconn disgruntled workers. This is not about zero COVID. Why is there an American YouTuber, you know, yeah. putting out tweets like this? It's because there's a, a coordinated effort right now to shut down yes. the narrative that this was anything but that. And it, like, again, any doubt that this has got anything to do with zero COVID, all right? Yeah. Remember, they're breaking down the zero COVID barriers. Yeah. They're attacking the zero COVID cops because yeah. these are the police and the military. They're all in hazmat suits. Yes. Coming there to suppress the people. If it wasn't about zero COVID, you wouldn't see that. No. I mean, it makes it very easy, I suppose, in these situations to know who the enemy is because they look like stormtroopers. <laughs> yeah, these quite literally become <laughs> Star Wars. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. These are the rebels. Yeah, and I mean, you could just look at the sheer amount of people that are just, they've had enough with this shit. This is, again, it's not a worker dispute. You understand, and we covered this before, guys. I want you to understand that if there are places, like in Qinghai, for example, yeah. as a province in China, where over 40 days, people have been locked in one wet market. Mm. They can't go see anywhere. They can't go see their families. They can't go to work. Dude, They're stuck in a wet there's market. There's a friend of mine in Inner Mongolia has been locked up for 53 days. 53 days. In their apartment. In his apartment, yeah. yeah. Can't leave. Not, not allowed to leave. No. Um, and people don't get that, you know? Yeah. Can you imagine being locked up for 53 days? That's what these workers don't want. No. That's why they were fleeing on foot down the highways, you yeah. know, in October. This is just, it's, it's insane what's going on here. And you've got so many people in one place, of course. Yeah. Uh, they're using, using fireworks, fireworks again. It's a makeshift weapon. Yeah, of course. Um, dude, this is absolutely what's going on right now in China. And it's absolutely crazy. It's crazy. Now, yeah. to uh, some perspective that you might not get from like a, maybe mm -hmm. a mainstream outlet. But this is uh, where you can't use a Western lens to look at this. Yeah. This is not an uprising that's saying, oh, let's overthrow the central government. This no. is not an uprising that says, oh, everyone rise up, let's stop the Communist Party of China. No, no. one's doing that, right? Nope. The problem is, is that the Chinese government knows how things can morph. Yes. So things can take shape, right? This is in Guangzhou. They're putting up concrete barriers yeah. to stop people because they're revolting. 
and they keep breaking down the barriers so now they're like you know we'll use concrete and and uh, rubble and stuff to hold it in place yeah right anyway to take it back to that yeah they know that it's it's a slippery slope and it's a dangerous game yeah because all it takes is the intellectuals that know why this is happening sure. to become inspirational figures in these movements. So yeah. you have to stop the movement while everyone's in the street and everyone's kind of raring to go. Because if you get leadership figures in these areas, you can start to change people's minds about why this is actually happening. Yeah. This is not a local government problem. No. This is not my boss's issue. This is not the local police are so bad, but we love the police in Beijing deal. Yeah. And it doesn't take that long to change someone's mind. Again, this is not some uh, completely uneducated populace here. No. These are smart people, right? They know what, yeah. they know what's going on if you give them the opportunity to understand the truth. Correct. And I, again, uh, we have to be very mindful of the disinformation campaigns that yeah. are going on right now. And the number one disinformation campaign is trying to shift the blame of these protests, which again, we have to make crystal clear are not only happening in Zhengzhou, but they're happening around the country, around the country small yeah. pockets here and there. Yeah. And a lot of them that we don't know about because it's suppressed yes. so yes. well. Yeah. They're happening everywhere. And it's not anything to do with a wage dispute. That might, in, that, in that particular instance in the Foxconn uh, factory, that is maybe what sparked them, yeah. but it was the zero COVID that created this mess. It's what it's turned zero it COVID from, that changed it from a wage from dispute. From a strike yeah. to a Because to a when they changed everyone's QR codes to red, all of a sudden it's like chaos. People are like, no, let's break down the barriers. Let's, you know, let's get our freedom. Yeah. It's just absolutely insane. You're seeing all of this stuff happening all over the place. Yeah. Um, and it's just, it's insane. And it's an overreaction. It's zero COVID. It's an overreaction, right? This, when you, oh, and again, oh, another thing to bring up, I wanted to bring up, I'm glad I didn't forget. The, there's a huge problem right now with a massive outflux of investors in China. Like people yeah. are already running away, but you know, China relied on constant, constant uh, influx of, of An investment. investment. Yeah to keep its economy going. Yes. And so when people see what zero COVID is, to be the, the ability to lock down an entire area, shut down industry, shut yes. down shut down a local economy. Yeah. To effectively stagnate and and paralyze a country. Yeah. It scares the hell out of people, right? They're yeah. like I'm going to take my money to Vietnam. I'm yeah. going to take my money to the You're going to move my factory out. I'm going to move my factory out. By is, the way, this is in uh, in the, Chengdu. The empty streets are in Chengdu? Yes. Yeah. And the um, other one is, is that still the Foxconn? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Because, um, by the way, Chengdu is currently under lockdown, as you can see from that footage, as usual. Yes. And there's a lot of these soft lockdowns going on. Yeah. You know, like I got friends in Beijing who are like, yeah, we're not really oh, under. These are COVID tests in, I believe, in, in Eastern China. Okay. COVID tests. Sorry. Um, here's the thing. Like, I got friends in Beijing, for Why's instance. There. Yeah. Look at the amount. I understand how COVID spreads yes. <laughs> what they're so paranoid about is this this, this is, is how, how it it's going to spread i got people in beijing who are telling me oh we're not officially under yeah. lockdown but all of the the restaurants and shops are closed yeah. and we can't go to public places and stuff but right. we're not under lockdown right but they are but I, i'm glad you brought that up because <laughs> going back to my point yeah they were so worried at the actual effects of people pulling out investment they saw what it, economic damage it yeah. does yeah. right the central government knows this so they say Oh, we're actually relaxing the zero COVID regulations. Oh, right? They let rumors spread about that. And then all these stupid investors yes. go and they're like, throw, oh, it's coming like, back. Yeah. They're the roaring dragons coming back. Yeah. And they use tactics like, oh, it's just a soft lockdown in Beijing. It's not a real lockdown. Yeah, it's a soft lockdown. And people are like, oh, this is, they're relaxing finally. They're going to oh, stop Oh, yeah, let's this go nonsense. invest in them. These yeah. stock bros and investment bankers, you know, wankers going over there and just like sure. throwing money at China. Because they're not seeing what's really happening. And you know what is happening? It's worse than before. It's, it's way worse. worse. The lockdowns are getting worse. Zero yeah. COVID's getting more restrictive. Yeah. Uh, we got a guy up north. I won't say where. I just spoke to him this morning. They're just rebranding things. They're saying, oh, we're going to have high quality nucleic acid testing. High quality COVID testing now, right? Right. What does they're that now, even mean? They are now in his city, right? Yeah. And this is, not, this is not a major city. Yeah. And you won't hear this on the news. They're now saying that everyone has to wear masks and stand 1.5 meters apart and wash their hands. But they've added a rule. Okay. What's the rule? They've added a rule now that if you're in line anywhere, including COVID testing line and line for groceries, you're not allowed to talk or else it's, a, it's against the law because that spreads COVID. So you can't talk now. Right. So they're coming up with all these redressing the laws and rules and zero COVID is just as bad, if not worse, in places you're not going to find any reporting out of. Yeah. Right. 
again, I'm just bringing it back to the fact that they're attacking the COVID testing booths. Yes. Because anyone tries to tell you it's a wage dispute, ask why are they attacking the COVID testing booths? Yes. Why are they breaking down the COVID quarantine barriers? Yeah. What does that have to do with a wage dispute? Yes. You know? Yeah. They're not burning down the factory. No. You know? They're not no. seizing the means of production. <laughs> no. You know? No. They are breaking down the COVID barriers. They are battling with the the police in hazmat suits. It's all COVID related. It's all COVID zero related. And, you know, it's it's dumb because another disinformation campaign I've been seeing going around for ages is this idea that zero COVID is saving China's economy. Because of zero COVID, they're keeping the infections down. So that yeah. means production can continue. No, it's actually having the complete opposite yeah. effect. Yeah. Because when everyone's locked down, the production ceases. And instead of people getting a, a a cold, which is what COVID has you know kind of become now, is like a a bad cold slash mild flu. Um, if anyone's had it, they'll know. Everybody that I know has had it. Mm. It's, it's like not a, the first. It's not like the first iteration. No, the first iteration was, it was awful. Horrid. But it's got to the point now where you're in bed for a couple of days and you're over it, and then yeah. you continue on. That would be way better for China's economy and for the world's economy. Um, but of course, they're trying to clamp down on this idea that this control method that they have this. Yeah. Absolutely absurd, over-the-top control method, which can control everyday life exactly where everybody can go, what they have to do. They all have to be tested multiple times before they can go do anything. You can't go into a shopping mall. You can't go and buy your groceries. You can't take a bus. You can't take a train unless you have that green QR code. Yeah. It's insane how much control they have. And so they're trying to justify it through all these different misinformation campaigns. And it's awful. I'm sick and tired of it. It's a bad system. And you can see the frustration is now boiling over and people have had it because people have been locked up like prisoners yeah. over and over yeah. and over again, all because of this stupid policy, you know? So coming out of this, because we're about to wrap this segment up and we can get into the regular show. Yeah. Um, by the way, if you guys are new, please subscribe. We have a live China show every Friday. Yes. Um, number two, I want you guys to be super hyper aware of the news that's coming out of this, not from major outlets, from from people that claim to be on the ground in China or saying like, oh, this is actually what's happening here. And they keep diverting it back to the whole Foxconn dispute because yes. then you'll know you're actually looking at a disinformation campaign. You'll be, you'll have, you're armed with the knowledge to actually go forward with that. Yeah, exactly. This is not a wage dispute, guys. This is an uprising against zero COVID. And again, you don't, if you don't believe it, look at what happened to the same factory not that long ago where everybody was fleeing because of the zero COVID stuff on foot. There's incredible footage of that, of people just walking down the highways with all of their belongings to escape the COVID lockdowns. It's all got to do with the COVID lockdowns. And it's its like being imprisoned. It really is. Once you have that red QR code, you are now a prisoner. And the state decides if you're going to be imprisoned in your dormitory, if you're going to be imprisoned in a, a literally locked in a container somewhere in these quarantine facilities or any weird place. And then you also, you are not allowed to order your own food you have to rely on the state for food. And sometimes we've had situations with people starving to death. It's true. The the deaths from zero from COVID in China are are uncountable. We'll never know the real amount of deaths from the actual uh, disease the itself. First outbreak, yeah. From the first outbreak. But the deaths from starvation, suicide, mental health issues, all this other crap. Oh, people, people who have like serious medical conditions yeah. but cannot seek medical help because they don't have a another COVID thing. thing. To, another thing to bring up, a lot of the uprisings happening now, uh, particularly we had one in Lanzhou. Yeah. Um, and there's a new one because babies and kids have died because they can't get medical attention. Yeah, so you've got a, a kid with an incredibly high fever, very sick, needs immediate me medical attention. And they're like, no, even though there's a hospital 800 yeah. meters away, they're like, you don't have the QR code yes. or you have to quarantine or whatever, and the kid yeah. doesn't get medical attention. That's a real story, by the way. Yep. Kid dies... The whole local area is like, screw New this bullshit. Yeah. yeah, they're like, that's it. It's enough. This zero COVID thing is a massive mistake. Yep. It's a massive, massive mistake. They can't go back on mistake. it. That's how a one-party state works. So it, when you want to apologize for a one-party state and authoritarianism and you want to say, hey, uh, at least they get stuff done. No, this is, this is actually what happens in the end. Yeah, I just wanted to, once again, I, I want to know from a Chinese propagandist perspective exactly what's happening here. The coronavirus is 100% under control here right now. Oh, it's under control? 
yeah, that's yeah. what I see as total you, you, control. You could see, you could see it's completely under control. Hundred percent under control. Yeah. Um, Interesting. That's under control, right? I'd say it's under control. I mean, mm. let's take a look at some of the other stuff here. How about? Hmm. How about this? Yeah, what's going on here? Yeah, what's what's happening? The coronavirus is 100% under control here right now. Huh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. I guess he's right. Yeah, I'd say. Uh, by the way, that is a Chinese propagandist. We have discovered him. Well, not discovered. It's been around for a while. Yes, but we've discovered that he's a... Senior citizen fellow. Yeah, <laughs> we'll get into it later. It's very yeah. funny, actually. Any, yeah, we've got... We'll, we'll introduce you to who, who this, uh, this absolutely delusional... Um, Chinese propagandist is in a minute. The coronavirus is 100% under control here right now. Yeah, well, don't worry, you'll you'll get to, to see who is. Anyway, the fact of the matter is, uh, sorry, let us get us get us back in there. Um, things are not under control. As much as the Chinese government tries its absolute best to push the propaganda narrative that zero COVID is working and they've beat COVID and it's amazing and because of it, they're leading the world and they've done everyone such a big favor because of zero COVID. All they've done is hurt the people of China yeah. immensely. Yeah. Anyway, I'm sure we'll be harking back to this. We've got quite a few interesting segments and things to cover uh, now in the rest of the show. Some of it will be getting back to this, but uh, we need a break from all this doom and gloom. So we're going to go back to some, some funny things and uh, get back into our regular rhythm here. So let's start out with what's new where we talk about everything in China that's new, right? And we got some good stuff in here. We got some good right. stuff in here. So um, guys, let's chill out a bit and take a look. What do we got here? We have... Um, Chinese ox, oh no. <laughs> By the way, if you were here last week, you would have been introduced to uh, Subway Wonder Man. Should I, should I roll it? Yes. Okay, guys, so we asked people to put together something and look at what we got. Hey, do I look like a subway wonder man? man, man. <laughs> Tell me that's not incredible. That's incredible. I mean, subway wonder man. The, the best part about it, let me, I'll pause it. Hey, actually. do I look like a subway wonder man? man, man. <laughs> okay, like what I really love about this is his headphones. He threw them at the screen and look, they became like a living entity. It's like a like a fighting game character in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. And it says <laughs> DTL Wanda. Yeah, Wanda Wanda Ren in Chinese, and it also says Wanda Man in yeah. uh, in Japanese as well in Katakana. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. Like seriously, massive, massive props. Uh, no credit though, because this person is Chinese and they asked to be unnamed. Yeah, you see, that's how it works, yeah. guys. Um, Beautiful, wonderfully talented Chinese person we who are, made Chinese this. Chinese audience is amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and of course, we can't credit them because the, the CCP is a mafia organization who goes after, after anyone yep. and anything that has some kind of criticism of the CCP. And being tied to us immediately equals, you know. It's kind of like touching the plague. Yeah. Right. That, so, unfortunately, but hey, what a brilliant Thank soundbite. You so yeah. Much. And that's going to be My here friend. forever. We're not yes. getting rid of that soundbite. No. That's like, it is just incredible. Okay, so... Um, yeah, Chinese Ox became... He's claiming that he's a Subway Wonder Man. I love this one, yeah, too. This, this one we can credit to Hada Peruka from mm -hmm. uh, our subreddit. Mm -hmm. I love how fabulous he is. He's wrapped <laughs> around the cord. He's speaking into the microphone. Yeah, it's exactly. Fantastic. Hey, do I look like a Subway Wonder Man? I love it, that didn't this... it By the way, it turned out that that guy, Subway Wonder Man... Hey! Do I look um, like a Subway Wonder Man? Man? man. Yeah, it... it it actually turns out that he was a 90 day fiance. Yeah, and he's uh so he get basically is a contract kind of talent, right? So he has a website and you can go you can go source him for your own production. It's, it's Chinese, really interesting. Chinese government bought him. They bought him to, to do propaganda, it's yeah. It's hilarious. And then they dubbed him over with a, you know, Chinese man's voice. I love it. I'm it's, here for it. Yeah, it's great. Anyway, Subway Wonder Man is going to be a part of the show from now on. Yeah, he's a mascot for yeah. sure. Okay. Now, um, China's unveiled its uh, sixth generation fighter, at least like nice. prototype concept of its sixth generation uh, fighter. There's nothing of value here. Nope. There's, uh, we shouldn't even talk about it. I'm just saying, hey, it's what's new in China, right? Hey. Turns out it's just a copy of like conceptual drawings from America's sixth yeah, generation which, fighter. Which aren't even necessarily official. No, of course. Just like sci-fi concepts and stuff. The, the thing that worries me about this, again, as usual, is it's, again, not original. Yes. Like, they couldn't even make an original fake mock-up of a 6th-gen fighter, because that's not, not something that's legitimate, by the way. No. 
Um, I, I was talking to somebody that knows military stuff, and they mm-hmm. said a country would never show their plans for a <laughs> no. sixth gen fighter unless they were stuck and they were actually they, they didn't have anything of substance. I know, and they, they want some clout. Yeah. Um, this does it have five G? <laughs> yes, does it have five G? Probably does. I love this. Oh, some sad news actually. Yeah, uh, yeah. The world mourns as uh, diplomat Henry Kissinger, ninety six, is found alive. <laughs> it's, That's it's, going to be in such poor taste, like when he dies next week, <laughs> or whenever. I'm going to play it again. <laughs> I'll play it again. <laughs> um, guys, we all know that like uh, beauty filters are a thing in China, and lengthening legs is a big part of that. Okay. Mm. And um, well, you can just see the the, the effects that it yes. has on people over here. You know, you lengthen your leg, but it's it's ridiculous. I don't understand why people just defy reality like this. It's gotten to a point where if in China you're not using a filter, it's almost weird. It's, it's like weird. weird. Yeah. It's like, well, you don't have a filter on. What no. the heck? Like, it comes at default yeah. on. Well, remember, like Chinese even phone. like what was it? It's six, seven years ago when yeah. I bought that uh, the Oppo yeah. phone. Um, it was by default you couldn't turn it off like you had to go yeah. through your settings and every time you took a photo yeah. you couldn't turn it off permanently by default it would have a beauty filter and it would make me look like snow white it did you looked like a bearded snow white it was awful yeah it's terrible yeah you know? it makes you it makes people like bleached yeah and it like smooths out your skin yeah. and gives you rosy cheeks and yeah. bigger eyes i was like yeah. i look like a freaking alien yeah. anyway it's just kind of funny to see how that all works out over there yeah, poor dude in the dog. Poor dog. You know, there there is a a darker side to this length lengthy leg thing um, in China, and that is when people submit resumes. Right, yeah. if you're hiring, you can specify. It's very discriminatory. You can specify height, yeah, weight, you know, looks, all of that kind yeah. of stuff. So you can put out an advert in the paper saying, um, you know, we want a secretary, but she must be. You know, 1.6 meters tall or whatever it is, one point. You know, just yeah. pick a five nine. Okay, yeah. six or six foot. And five. Let's say for Chinese, we'll say five seven. Okay. Okay. You must be five seven. Must be pretty. Must be thin. Yeah. Can't weigh more than forty eight kilograms. Right. You can put that on a resume. It's not illegal. There's no discrimination yep. laws in China. Nope. And so you would get a situation where a lot of girls who just couldn't meet the height requirement were getting leg lengthening surgery, which yeah. is this awful thing they do in China, where they actually break your leg. They're like. They put you in this clinic or whatever for six months or something, and they break your leg, and then they like put, I don't know, what would you say, like splints, like yes. a cast, like, yeah. uh, like metal pins and stuff, yeah. and they basically hold the bones just just a little bit away from yeah. each other so the new bone grows in between, yeah. so it lengthens the bone, and then they'll do it again to yeah. like make a longer leg. That's not going to be good for you. I actually did a whole video called uh, China's dangerous sexy beauty standards yeah Check it out. yeah did a whole anyway just just thought i'd uh, throw that macabre crap in there yeah <laughs> you guys want to see what a stream farm looks like so a lot of yeah. you are asking me hey why whenever i turn on tiktok or freaking instagram or whatever any mm-hmm. app right yeah shorts live any live thing why do i see a random chinese girl just doing stuff Trying on clothes, singing songs, eating out of a hot pot. Why Why do I see this everywhere? I'm not yeah. in China, right? Sure. Why am I seeing this everywhere? And it's because this is what a stream farm looks like. This woman here will be live streaming. Let's say she's selling cheap houses, like the thing she's wearing, yeah, right? Yeah. The dress. What she'll do is she'll have 400 accounts mm-hmm. on different things. So she'll have different usernames. She'll have different apps all on these things. So she'll be on like Facebook and yeah, TikTok everyone, and Douyin everyone. and YouTube and every single thing all at once. In this, uh, again, China blocks all these apps, blocks Facebook, blocks YouTube, blocks uh, American TikTok, all these things, right? Yeah. But do you know why they allow it? Because it's market penetration simply to allow China's image to get out there. So if someone's already been okayed in China, yeah. like, yeah, you're allowed. They go you, through those MCNs. They do. They go through MCNs. You use your ID. Yeah, we discussed it last week. Right? It's state run. Yeah. So once you've been okayed by the state, it's for you to go penetrate the market and spread soft power for the Chinese government on yeah. these apps. So if you see, uh, I hate to say this again, it's not too like rain down on anyone's prey but if you see girls teaching chinese from china if you see them teaching about tea or selling products or uh teaching about chinese culture or something they are the chinese government yeah they have been okayed by the state because it's state banned and yeah. blocked you may not as a chinese citizen have a facebook account no. you may not have a twitter account you no. may not have a youtube page because that stuff is officially banned and blocked by your own government in china so if you're on 
any of these media things, it's because you've been approved by the Chinese government. Yeah, if you want to see more in depth, definitely check out our last episode, uh, episode 135. We yeah. covered that in depth and we found it uh, actually with help of uh, Aspie yeah. in Australia. They managed to really get deep and figure out who was running these accounts. And it turns and out it, it affected us. China. And, and it, it affected, affected us. us. Like we actually got them trying to censor us, these yep. MCNs. Anyway, I just want you to look at the absurd amount of phones there. And I want to, you to understand that this is how things operate in China. Everything's turned up to 11. So when you see the illegal fishing in the seas, it's this kind of deal. It's yep. just like, do it as much as possible. Who cares about the consequences? Just overdo it, yes. basically. It's always overkill. And that, you know, again, using one one woman to sell whatever it is or do whatever right. she's doing and it spreading it out to like... It doesn't have to be live. No. It can just be a smear, like, throwing it out there, you know? Yeah, but whatever it is, that is that is a fire hazard. <laughs> that is a huge fire yeah. hazard. Oh, yeah. we uh, Somebody shared this with us, by the way. It's kind of funny. Um, what's going on here? Oh, these are clam decanes. Uh, I wonder <laughs> who would like those. Yeah. <laughs> Probably clam. What man. would happen if he ate one? That's absolutely correct. Yeah, the, he, he, yeah, clam sure. canes. That's him, dude. Imagine what is that, by the way? Canes. It's clam flavored candy canes. That's disgusting. <laughs> that's the, that's the point. Okay, <laughs> it's a All troll, right. obviously, right? You think it's a troll? Because yeah, sure. okay, obviously, he was gonna eat a clam candy cane. I don't know. Maybe if you're into seafood, you like that fishy smell. I don't, I don't think people want that in a candy cane. Okay, well, I, ho I, think I it's certainly like, hope not. I think it's like you put it in someone's stocking or you give it to someone at the office and you're like you're like what's wrong with this thing you know and yeah. you're like, it's a clam candy case it's clam exactly candy. so i like this the big shill down clam man uh i show i shoot pets and uh your mother is a big suffering subway wonder right, man because that's what subway wonder man said yeah. in his cl initial clip yeah, exactly so uh it's gonna be versus hey do i look like a subway wonder man man, man. we need to have a poll, a poll right yeah now. we need a poll you guys in the in the chat please tell us Who's the winner? Thanks. It's going to be a Thanksgiving showdown. Yeah, okay. exactly. By the way, it is, it is Thanksgiving for all of you yeah. um, who are not American and uh, just like myself. But I appreciate this holiday. I think it's a good one. Um, I like it. Um, of course, it makes you fat, though. But it, that's does, like... it does make you fat. Okay, poll is up. Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving showdown. I'll uh, read it at the end of the show. Who's the winner? Clam Man versus Subway Wonder Man. Yes, exactly. Vote now. Oh, don't worry. We got Pizza Man coming up, too. He's going to be part of this at some point. Yes. Um, okay, oh, this is funny. This is fun. Yeah, explain what happened here. So there is this live streamer. Um, now, keep in mind, China, well, the Chinese government stance is to support Putin and to support Russia. Yeah, yeah. Uh, don't let anyone convince you otherwise. They are cr China's Kremlin bots, basically, <laughs> sure. because they're they're uh, let's say temporary allies right at the moment, right? Yeah. Anti-West, right? Mm -hmm. So. You have tons of Chinese live streamers and military analysts and all this stuff that will go out there and live stream in Chinese and say, oh, we love Russia, we love Putin. Look at the advancements the uh, Russian military made in Ukraine. They'll do daily reports about how yeah. Russia blew up this or that, blah, 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 yeah. to promote Russia. Right? Yeah. It's in China's best interest that their populace supports Russia right now. Yes. So one of these guys was getting real butthurt, and he was like, I swear to God, if, uh, if Ukraine, if Ukrainian forces, because it looked like they were going to take Kherson back yeah. from yeah. Russia... If they take it back from Russia, then I'll eat shit from a pot on camera live, right? Yeah. And so everyone's like, dude, Ukraine just took back Kherson. Yeah. Where's the, you know, shit eating? You yeah, gotta eat gotta some do shit it. now. Yep. And he just bailed. Like, he's, everyone's looking for him now. They're yeah, like, you yeah, gotta eat the shit, dude. He's like completely not, he's like hiding now. He doesn't want to eat shit. You know what the official excuse is, though, is that Ukraine didn't take back Kherson. It was NATO and US. So mm -hmm. that doesn't count. Oh, really? Because it wasn't Ukraine by itself. Oh, I see, yeah. I see. That's a convenient excuse. Okay, now listen. This is hilarious. Yes. Okay, yes. Th this is, I believe, a Russian girl yes. in Guangzhou. Russian model, yeah. Okay, she's a Russian model. Now, we've all seen the chaos surrounding the zero COVID thing. Yeah. Okay? So now, I don't understand why she hasn't been arrested and deported for I, this. She Bible. probably She probably has arrested, been. Yeah. But just take a look at what she did, okay? What is the... Can you just think... What is the scariest thing for a Chinese person? Well, because of the government, it would be a red QR code. Oh, really? Let's take yeah. a look. What does she do? Like this. <laughs> 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 it's ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, like asking for help from a Bowen and then shows him the red QR code. He literally <laughs> runs away. <laughs> 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 okay <laughs> yeah um, okay wait we'll it. Go yeah back to that now i want to preface this it would be mean spirited to do that but i think that it was fake it was just a picture of a red QR yeah it's code. not a real qr code she's yeah. showing a photo of a qr because it would be a locked out but it shows you how afraid people are of the zero COVID policy because yes. it literally means you'll go to jail yes so take a look she shows to this uh she's asking help She's asking help from this um, security guard, Bowen, yeah. whatever he is over here. Yeah. He sees it, and what happens? He, he literally runs, runs away. I honestly think that if there's a massive crowd of Chinese people right now in China, and probably could, even abroad, you if, you have a, if you have a red QR code on your yeah. phone and you hold it up, you'll be like Moses. like Moses. You it shows Moses, you though. how much fear... Um, yeah. The government has instilled in everyone. That's by design, right? Yeah. Um, but that really proves a point. Yeah. Mean spirited or not, and I'm pretty sure she's going to get into a lot of trouble. Oh yeah, yeah. If she hasn't already. It's super mean, and actually, I yeah. feel bad for the people, and and I don't blame the people. By no. The way. Anyone would have. But it proves a if, point. It does prove a point. Though. It definitely proves a point because, like, you can see, like the these uncles, they they're like all about helping this pretty foreigner. Yeah. You know, they like said she's using the leg filter, but for real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like she brings it up on her phone. This dude's like he's all helping her and stuff. Then she brings it up on his on her phone, and it's like. Yeah, let's let's just watch that again quickly, just to prove that point. Just drive it home. It's like he's all cool. She's like, "Oh yeah, what's this, by the way?" Yeah, no, no nothing wrong. Oh no, with his he's like, "Oh <laughs> no, of course." But he's like, "Holy shit, I'm out of here!" Right. You really ruin a person's day. You really, really could, because you think your code's gonna go red. Yeah, now you think really you're screwed. You up, oh but... yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's why it's kind of a social experiment in a way. It's a prank. I hate prank stuff, but you know what? I kind of appreciate the point that this is making. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, it shows the absolute fear. Yeah. Caused fear, by the fear of the government. Oh yeah. Now, by the way, how how are those COVID tests working out? Let's have a look. So everyone knows that you got to do mass COVID testing uh, daily in some places. Yeah. In China, it's mandated. Sometimes twice a day. Sometimes twice a day. Mm. So let's see. Uh, let's see how effective these are. Let's. I want you to look at this uh, worker. He's a health worker, mm -hmm. healthcare worker, giving the COVID test. Let's yeah. have a look. Not really. Shine it. <laughs> Mama, I that real quick. I just want to point out some key features here. Okay. This pandemic worker that is doing the COVID test yeah. is smoking a cigarette yes. without his mask on. Yes. And then sneezes on the COVID he test. He sneezes on it while he's smoking. Yeah, he, there he goes. Like. <laughs> you guys, remember I said that the zero COVID thing is not working in China, but the top. The top of the government is telling the world that the whole world is doomed and failed because only China cares about its populace enough mm -hmm. and, and to implement such a strict policy. Yes. This is typical. We call it chabudua, which means half-ass. So they're doing this top-down bullshit. They're mm -hmm. doing this ridiculous policy, but yeah. they're not really, are they? No, you it's know? just a bunch of crap. Yeah. You know, we've seen and we've shown on the show many times how they're just faking it. Like that woman yeah. who's just swapping herself over she and over. She swapped herself or swapped something. Yeah, because, right. you know, the thing is they've got quotas that have yeah. to be met, yeah. you know? Um, it's it's just a whole bunch of bullshit. And, of course, now it's 1.3% of China's, China's GDP is COVID Your testing. GDP is COVID yes. testing. So, of course, they're going to continue it because it's generating yes. money. For, Billions. You know? it's Billions. And creating massive amounts of waste. <laughs> I mean, Once you can't make this up. Okay, so... You can make this up, apparently. Yeah. Um, okay, a little bit of an introduction here, okay? Let's go back a little bit. How did this come on our what? radar? I, I mean, there look... There was a debate on Twitter, remember, about the Uyghur thing. Yeah, there was a debate about the Uyghurs, and this guy crops up because he's... This guy, by the way, uh, we can call him a gray monkey because he's an old white monkey. Sure. He is so embedded in Chinese uh, state media mm. and all of that kind of stuff. He's literally just... Uh, Go-to guy, if you're looking for this type of somebody who's, um, I don't know, old and... and it's uh, the, you know the type. Yeah. Chinese government loves like older, thin, white guys because yeah. it's some wide... It means that you're an authority on something. Yeah, so if you want somebody who you can put up there and say, oh, we need someone to look like he's got an opinion that matters, um, they choose this guy. Complete loon, by the way. Completely loony. Um, and I think this video proves it because... He put out a video. Well, state media put this out a video. State media. state media put out a video. Tea House is Chinese state media. Yeah, Tea House is one of their uh, the amplifier booster channels. amplifier channels. They put out this thing about like why the Xinjiang Uyghurs are not oppressed or whatever. Yeah, and it's they, genocide denial. Yeah, it's a genocide. This is a genocide denial video. 
but for some reason he decided that he's going to use like fables either that or the the script writers did we'll but see. but okay we're just going to play the clip for you and then we're going to analyze it because it's it bears analyzing yes. so let's take a look okay clean video let's do it upon a time there was an evil bad wolf in charge of Xinjiang's Uyghur Muslims. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, Goldilocks. We don't care about your happiness. Enter our story, the clever scorpions. Well, now this is the scorpion who promised to give the frog a ride across the stream. Except in the middle of the stream, the scorpion stung and killed the frog anyway. Santa Claus told the little boy the sky is blue, and the researcher and the scorpion said, wait, Santa Claus isn't real, therefore the sky isn't blue. Yeah. So What? So I think we need to try to break this down a little bit, okay? Because this is supposed to be someone whose opinion is intellectual or... Or is supposed to have some clout, right? But so this is supposed. To, this is a Chinese government show, right? Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Okay, and he's a senior citizen fellow of some some or other think tank nonsense, which is just CCP meddling nonsense. Okay. So anyway, once upon a time, okay, let's see what he says. Once upon a time, there was an evil bad wolf in charge of Xinjiang. There's big bad evil wolf in charge of Xinjiang's Uyghur Muslims. So. Okay? This is genocide denial propaganda. Yeah, I mean, the, the whole point of this is he basically tries to prove a point that, like, it's not real or something, okay? okay? You, you can watch the full thing. It's very easy to find. Yeah. If we, you can go watch it, and it makes no more sense if you watch the full video. No, no. When it, I, I browse through it, you're showing me. I, yeah. I, it's, it's almost as if it's worse. But I just wanted to show, like, how absolutely pathetic this nonsense is, okay? you're Muslims. Right. I'll huff and I'll... He says... I'll huff and I'll puff. Puff and I'll blow your house down, Goldilocks. I'll What's huff up with and this I'll smug look. I don't know, but okay. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, Goldilocks. So at first, you know, you're like, whatever. He's just saying some, and then I was like, hang on a second, Goldilocks That's, has nothing to do. Bears. Yeah, has nothing to do with the big bad wolf blowing down a house. What? Goldilocks went to the three bears' house and ate porridge Not and shit. Not the wolves and no. the three little pigs. No. So, I mean, okay, he can't even get a very basic um, children's story right. He's mixing them up. The three little pigs and the three little bears, obviously. Yeah. Okay? And then it gets better. We don't care about your happiness. Enter our story. Okay. <laughs> Why is there scorpions now? Now we all know we all know the Aesop's fable, okay? <laughs> what is uh, this? Okay, there, there's an Aesop's fable, and it's used in China a lot. They right. they use the snake thing, and they use the this scorpion frog thing. Now in the Aesop's fable, it's all about a, a scorpion that wants to cross the river, and he asks the frog for a ride, and the frog's like, "No, you're a bad, you're a scorpion," and he's like, "No, don't worry, I'll." I'll behave or whatever. So then the scorpion rides on the frog's back and then he still, because it's in his nature, he still stings the frog and then they both die. Right. So it's kind of like a fable as in don't trust bad people. Yeah. Kind of like this dude. So <laughs> the thing is, he says, enter our story of the clever scorpions, plural, by okay. the way. Okay, there's more than one now. Yeah, but, yeah, but like, then immediately though, let's take a look. From plural, it's to... The clever scorpions. Well, now this is the scorpion. This is a scorpion. So he went from plural to singular. Okay. Okay. But hang on, it gets better because maybe you didn't pick up on this part, right? Wait, so just to refresh, the Aesop's fable is a frog that lets a scorpion ride on his back to cross the, to cross yes. the river and then it stings the frog. Yes, that's okay. correct. So cuz cuz frogs swim and yeah. scorpions don't. Sure. Okay? Makes sense, yeah. So let's see what he says. This is a scorpion who promised to scorpion who promised to give the frog a ride across the stream. <laughs> There's uh, round two. Can, can you imagine the scorpion <laughs> trying to swim with a <laughs> with frog, frog on its, its back? back? What Dude. is the story? I well, knew, I grew up with that story. This is very confusing to me to see it flipped on its you head. You know, I think what's happened here is that this old fellow, the senior citizen fellow, he has um, gobbled up all of the fairy tales that the CCP tells him. Yeah, because they and always so, get it wrong. Well, I mean, just the fairy tales about yeah. everything, yeah, all yeah, their like, propaganda. They are fairy tales, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. He's gobbled it up so much that it's mixed everything up in his head. <laughs> okay. So bad. But then the part that I okay, we can understand that he's, you know, had a senior moment and sure. he's mixed up the three bears and the three pigs. Whatever. I guess okay, that can yeah, happen yeah, to whatever. anyone, Goldilocks, right? Goldilocks, yeah. Goldilocks and the, the big bad wolf, you know, it's living a in the same. Error. It's just so bad. And then the thing about like mixing up the frog and the scorpion. Okay. Okay, oh, maybe again right. senior moment. But okay. 
what is this next garbage? Because this is the part I can't figure out, yeah. okay? Yeah. What is this, okay? Let's play this next part. Except in the middle of the stream, the scorpion stung and killed the frog anyway. Santa Claus told the little boy the sky is blue, and the researcher in the scorpion said, wait, Santa Claus isn't real, therefore the sky <laughs> isn't <What>? blue. <laughs> I don't know where he's what? getting about Santa Claus yeah. and the sky's See, blue. Here's the deal. Before the show, you, yeah. when you pulled this up, you showed me the whole thing. It doesn't make any more sense in the full version. No, because this, whatever this analogy he's trying to make about Santa Claus telling the little boy the sky's blue, it means nothing. Okay? It means absolutely nothing. What? I mean, for those of you who want context, what he's trying to say is that the scorpion... Scorpion slash scorpion who gives a, a frog a ride on its back. Right. <laughs> okay, the swimming, the, the the champion swimmer scorpion, right? Yeah. Um, Michael Phelps of yeah. the scorpion Michael world. Michael Phelps of the scorpion world, okay? <laughs> and the worst frog in the world because he can't swim, okay? This His piece of shit frog. Regarded He's frog. just like a frog who's like desiccated, <laughs> desiccated frog who can't move his legs, okay? Take it my yeah, exactly. I can swim. <laughs> kind of like him. Anyway. What he's trying to say is that the scorpion slash scorpions is like Western media, basically yeah. trying to say that... I got that part. Yeah. yeah. He's trying to say that like the Xinjiang genocide and all that stuff, you see. Um, and then the, the researcher that he talks about is Adrian Zenz, but he can't say it in the video because you're not allowed to say that name. Yeah. So, so he says like, oh, and there's a researcher who is not even important to say his name. Just prefacing here. Adrian <laughs> Zenz has done a lot of the work to expose the genocide Yeah, the in genocide, Xinjiang. yeah. So they're trying, this whole point of this video is the Chinese government hired a, a white monkey shell. Yes, gray and, monkey. A gray monkey, sorry, gray monkey shell. I'm, yeah. This, I'm fairly new to this guy. Sure. And cursory research shows that he's done a lot of gigs for them all over the board, like from America caused the virus or something like that, mm -hmm. or like, or it's it's America's fault for perpetuating violence around the virus or something like oh, that. Oh yeah, man. All this... the way down to gen Uyghur genocide. This denial. guy writes like dime store um, books for Amazon and publishes them. Uh, so yeah. it's like a oh, China's better than the U.S. and that kind of stuff. That kind of nonsense. So the yeah. kind of person that's lived in China too long mm -hmm. and kind of has to be not has to has chosen the path of being like a shill for Chinese state media. And the problem is people like this. Mm -hmm. They're naturally kind of egotistical people, almost narcissists. Uh, almost? Uh, very narcissistic. I think it's a plain, clear example of a narcissist. Sure. But what happens mm -hmm. is the Chinese government, authoritarian governments, they use someone like that as some sort of figurehead or, a, a, mm. you know, something that that person craved back home. They wanted yeah. to be an authority figure, but it never worked out. Sure. So you go to China and you get this position of authority. They're quoting you. You're a fellow, fellowship C of the ring. Senior citizen fellow. You're a, you're a, mm -hmm. a CEO chairman. You're a scholar. You're, <laughs> yes. You know, all these things. Sure. You're all of these titles, and you just walk home, like, head held high. And you can see in his mannerisms, too. They'll be like, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, Goldilocks. Goldilocks. And he's like, yeah, well, fuck you. Yeah. Bitch. Yeah. <laughs> that's, the, that's the reaction he Yeah, has, he's too right? full of himself. The fact that he got these very basic things mixed up and, and messed yeah. up shows you that everything that he talks about is garbage. Yes. If you can't, like, basic general knowledge that everybody knows, every child in the world knows about the three little pigs and Goldilocks. Yes. Everyone who knows Aesop's fables knows that a, a frog does not ride on a scorpion's back. Yes. But he's saying it, it with the full confidence. Yeah, so this, the only reason I know a little bit about this guy yeah. is because there was uh, a friend of ours. He threatened to sue him. He someone. threatened to sue him because he like made fun of one of his state appearances. So get ready for a, a bullshit lawsuit. From, oh, from oh I mean, the, the thing is, if... If that does happen, it's going to be a huge dog and pony show, and it'll be quite interesting and fun to put it on here. So, yeah, just saying. Uh, anyway, this dude, hilarious foible here. Yeah. And the reason that we pointed this out is you were on, both of you and I were on Twitter the other day. Yeah. And it's important to know the genesis of this. Yeah. Somebody said something about Uyghurs. Uyghur genocide. And this guy, mm -hmm. and again, I didn't really follow, I didn't know, he has a YouTube channel, right? Oh, he's got lots of stuff, he's got everything. But he goes on, mm -hmm. and I was doing research about this Tea House thing, Yeah. this amplifier channel. Yeah, and if like, you, see, you can see the logo up in the top corner. I got excited. That is state media. Because in his response to like saying some Uyghur genocide denial thing on mm -hmm. Twitter, I saw this tea house thing on that video and I go, that's exactly, I was doing research about this because I'm looking at amplifier channels that yeah. don't get state labels on YouTube. Yeah. And I'm trying to figure out how are these propaganda 
arms of the Chinese government operating on YouTube without state labels, yeah. right? Without saying this is part of the Chinese government, right? Mm -hmm. This one's not. Yeah. So I'm like, wait a minute, this is just from Chinese state media. It is, because right? you find the same video it's being the same video on, on state on media. CGTN, mm -hmm. On Xinhua and all these like state media outlets. And he, you, he posted this video mm -hmm. as a response about proof that there's no Uyghur genocide. Yeah. And I was, I was shocked. I was yeah. shocked that this was his proof. I think we have to listen to it one more time because yeah. it's, a, it's sure. a very good fable. There was an evil bad wolf in charge of Xinjiang's Uyghur Muslims. Huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, Goldilocks. You know what? I think state media might have something else to say about this. What's that? Wow, so good. <laughs> <laughs> just saying, I'm just saying, you know, um, again, it's it's fascinating to see just exactly how low China stoops when it comes to finding its figureheads and its propagandists. Right. Mm. And again, if you're going to disprove yourself, make very simple, basic mistakes, because that means your take on Xinjiang at the fact that he thought the frog was on the <laughs> scorpion's back. You could take everything he says and put it the other way around. Yeah. There's no no concentration camps or right. you know genocide in Xinjiang. He actually means there there are there are you know yeah everything's I see, opposite it's flipped right yeah ah, clever exactly anyway Don't give him too much credit anyway I wanted to bring that because the uh, the, the whole Twitter uh, thing about that because he probably is going back watching this video and still thinking that's how the fables work because yeah they're like again it was a weaker. Um, there was a Uyghur activist who posted something about the Uyghur genocide, and he replied to that Uyghur activist with this video as yeah, proof. Yeah, that's what I was. He's like, "You're just about. talking nonsense. Watch my video." Right. And that was like yesterday, day before, yeah. or something. And we're like, "That's definitely not proof. <laughs> All that proves is that you're a loony." I'm sorry, yeah. but like, we don't care oh, about this your is, this one is Enter our story. Yeah. The clever scorpion. Well, now this boy, is the scorpion the who promised he, to get. He, I don't know something about him running a pizza shop before, oh, he, went okay. to, I was before just, he got I'm to I'm way behind on this one. Yeah, anyway. Give anyway, the frog a ride across the, the stream. Flying. Except yeah. in the middle uh, of the stream, so, hang on, the hang on, scorpion hang on. stung hang and on. killed the frog Santa anyway. Claus. Oh, yeah. Santa Claus told the little boy the sky is blue. And the researcher and the scorpion said, wait, Santa Claus isn't real, therefore the sky isn't blue. The confidence it's, is what gets me. It's ridiculous. It's the confidence of being wrong over and over and over again. Yeah. It just it hurts my feelings. In, in one video to make so many errors. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, let's move on. Um, because yeah, I'm tired of that. I mean, I'm so tired of him and I'm tired of his like absolute nonsensical takes on everything. The coronavirus is 100% under control here right now. You know? Anyway, yeah. uh, what's this all about? This is a subscriber of ours, eh? Yes, Danya Ceramics. She is a, uh, she makes like jewelry and stuff in Ireland. She's very talented. Her stuff's actually really nice. All of um, our subscribers are talented, yeah. That's very true. Anyway, she does great stuff. Mm -hmm. But she did something even better uh, for us. Yeah. She actually went to a, one of her favorite restaurants mm -hmm. in Ireland, right? Yeah. Turns out it's a Chinese and Korean restaurant. But I want you to see what she found next to it. Why don't you go to the next slide? Sure. I like how it's... Chinese and Korean restaurant. Yeah. It's cool. interesting. But it's just Chinese. Yeah. You probably see something on the wall, but we'll zoom it in here. Oh, yeah. And it, she had a little visit. What is this? Overseas Chinese Service Center Dublin. These are those police stations. Mm. There she is in the picture to prove that it's not just some random yes. picture of the internet. And she uh, was very surprised and mm -hmm. decided to take some photos and do a little research for us. Mm -hmm. uh, this has the Iris Fujian Business Association, the Fujian Again. Association, the Fujian Gang. Yeah. are the people in charge of very disgusting and malicious and really effed up stuff yeah. that China does to target people abroad. And this is the Overseas Chinese Service Center for the Fujian gang. That's correct. Uh, so the CCP is operating out of Dublin. Uh, yep. It is targeting people. It is watching people. It is surveilling people. Mm -hmm. And she is going to go back and see if they have shut this down because yeah. they were supposed to deal with this. Yeah, they were. So uh, hopefully the, that sign will be taken away soon. Yeah. I like it's got hands over the globe. Yeah. You know, it's supposed to be a heart or something, but it's actually just, it's, we're controlling. We're, we got you. Yeah, we're, we're here to capture you. We're Kung here to Zini. grab you. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Anyway, mm -hmm. thanks. A big shout out to her. Go check her yes. out on Instagram. Thank you yeah, for, for actually sure. the support going stuff. out there. She's great. Yeah. Thanks for going out there and, and showing us that. Yeah. Okay. So now it's time for us to skip past Soft Power Hour, because that was in the beginning, of course. And we're going to go straight on to Wu Mao Corner, where we talk about, you know, the Wu Mao and the crap that they get up to. 
um, you know, the usual type of hatred and nonsense. Um, and we're going to start off with something uh, which is, again, proof of the overreach of the CCP and Huawei. We all know Huawei. Huawei, how? Huawei, may. Okay. Mm-hmm. Huawei is uh, China's state-run uh, cell phone company. They're also telecommunications. Uh, and, I mean, let's from... let's let's be fair. Yeah. They're actually just a very sophisticated spy ring. Yes. I mean, okay. Honestly, though, they make telecommunications equipment. They make phones. Um, their entire company is built off of IP theft. Yep. They're the reason why Nortel in Canada went down. Yes. Because they stole all the innovations and they'd been hacking. They hacked them constantly for like about a decade. Yes. Taking all of their innovations and all of their, because they had access, they'd hacked into their system. So whenever Nortel had invented something or was putting out some, implementing something, they just took all of that. Yeah. And then made their own, you know, cheaper version to sell back to the Canadian market or back to whichever market undercutting them and of course running them out of business because yeah. you can't compete with yourself no. if you're selling your own product for half the price yes under a different name so anyway the fact of the matter is huawei we all know has been involved in the hostage diplomacy with canada and the meng Wanzhou effort and the whole um you know two michaels remember how they hired uh random like background actors yes like they went and hired college kids and told them they'd be part of a music video. We did. But then they actually were holding up like free Meng Wanzhou uh, Huawei signs basically outside the court. And then yes. the Chinese state media was using that as proof yes. that Canada also supports her release. <laughs> Shit signs. What the hell? <laughs> anyway, uh... Huawei's got a lot of overreach. The Chinese government's always like, no, no, no. That's yes. a private company. Nothing to do with us. Meanwhile, you know, they're always stepping in whenever Huawei's in trouble. So uh, we were reached out by um, Marcin, is that how you say? Marcin? Yeah. HF? Whatever that stands for, man. You know, maybe you could be a little bit more succinct with your matter. name. <laughs> what is it? I don't know. Henry Frogger? I don't know. Sure. Anyway, okay. Marcin was like, when promoting our screening of The Hong Konger, this Saturday in Kinoteka, how do you say that? Kinoteka in Warsaw, War Poland. In Warsaw, Poland. Warsaw saw war, you know? Yeah. Anyway, a Chinese Huawei employee tagged the CCP's embassy in Poland. He used the wrong flag. Singapore, the Singapore <laughs> flag yeah. And asked them for help in putting our panelists on their blacklist. Yeah. So um, here's the thing. You've got a Huawei guy. This James Wong guy um, is a category manager at Huawei Technologies. Tagged the Chinese embassy, asking them to reach out to the embassy in Poland to say, to put these people on a blacklist and yeah. somehow stop this event from happening. Huawei is using their employees mm -hmm. to go enforce law in Poland. Mm -hmm. Poland, I think you know what you need to do here. Mm -hmm. I think you need to have a deep investigation of Huawei and its employees and make sure that the freaking Chinese government isn't putting people on blacklist and harassing people in your own country. Yeah, and I think this also proves once again how powerful the Chinese embassies are and how how they've reached this point where they think that, and Chinese people think, like this guy, this Chinese uh, Huawei employee, you know, these nationalists, I should yeah. say, not people, just nationalists, they think that they can just tell the Chinese embassy to go and stop well, go to something. His tweet, go to his thing, his you message know? Next, next here. Yeah, I mean, just imagine, you can you can tell them to go and do something, and then uh, uh, they're going to do it, because the Chinese guys, embassies have the power. Guys, you know? they're calling us out saying it's Singapore. Yeah, we yeah, thank you. We just said it's the wrong flag. They used yes. the wrong flag. Read his message. Yes, yes. Anyway. There are reply they he is reaching out to the People's Republic of China in Singapore and he saying, is. please forward this information to the that's why I wanted to show yeah. this earlier. Yeah. Please forward this information to the embassy of the People's Republic in Poland and add these people on blacklist. Yes. In blacklist. Yeah. So he's reaching out to them because of course the um I don't know if he's based in Singapore. It's probably based in yes, Singapore. Yes, yes, yes. So he's asking that Chinese embassy to reach out to the Poland Chinese embassy to shut them down. Yeah. That's the idea. So also, Singapore, please look into uh, your Huawei employees there. Yeah, Singapore, probably what are you doing? Like, why are you them. allowing this nonsense to happen? Singa Singapore, the people are, are based right now, but the government is currently kind Very... of headed towards a little bit of a pro-CCP policy. Yeah. Unfortunately. 
So again, we just want to show the, the lengths of meddling that goes on here. And again, we've got Huawei connected to the Chinese embassy trying to, at least this Huawei employee, and he'll be like, oh, it was just my own opinion when yeah. they call him out. But hey, it's out there in public. If you're going to be a manager at Huawei or whatever, you probably shouldn't be involving yourself in this kind of well, political Huawei blackmail. Well, how whatever. many millions of dollars trying to divorce themselves by saying, no, we have nothing to do with our private company, we have nothing to do with the Chinese government. They're quite literally the Chinese government. They are the Chinese government. They work as a mafia for the Chinese government. They're a spy network for the Chinese government. They have The PLA has ownership, part ownership of it. Yeah, what exactly. are you doing? So I like, oh, now we can see his full name now. Yeah, it's Marcin... Hakimer Fernandez. I was so close. I was so close. You're close. Says, James Wong, this is no place to bully or threaten people. We are in Poland and not in China. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. And he says, uh, you've been reported to Facebook, because this was on a Facebook post, by yeah. the way. Threatening people. Yeah. Uh, and the relevant Polish authorities for threatening Polish citizens, for interfering in Polish internal affairs, and... For, as a Huawei employee, acting on behalf of the Chinese Communist government. James, and I don't usually say things like this, but James Wong, I hope that uh, relevant organizations are, you know, keep an eye on flights and things like that to make sure people like this don't end up in your country because they can act on behalf of the Chinese government to harass your citizens. Yeah. Be I careful mean, with this. We've just seen the that whole, yeah. in, in Ireland, the whole service station, the police station, the overreach of the Communist Party of China has reached a point now where Chinese citizens are so confident that the... Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter what country. They can just say, hey, embassy, go take care of these people. Shut this down. And they believe that it's going to happen. Yes. And you know what? It does happen to a certain extent yes. with all the intimidation from those international police stations that they set up, those clandestine yep. ones and so on. That, so, by the way, harass Chinese people yeah. most. Yeah, that's what we're talking uh, about. They're harassing people that oppose the Chinese government. Yeah. <clears throat> and they get their little minions to do their work yeah. for them. Now, okay, here's the thing. When you have um, a very terrible system like, you know, you remember the Cultural Revolution, or Devolution and the Great Leap Backwards or yep. Great Leap Forward, whichever you prefer to say, with Mao Zedong, yep. where tens of millions of people starved to death because of bad policy, where culture, like Chinese history and culture were destroyed, yes. proactively destroyed, yes. burn down temples, destroy old manuscripts, go smash down uh, statues, anything. You know what? Um, I got to say something because, you know, you often get this thing where China will reach out and say, you, the British, like the British looted our artifacts and so on and so forth to put in the British Museum, which is true, by the way. England went around and looted the shit out of all these oh, countries. Yeah, terrible. Terrible. Smashing, like grabbing statues and yeah. stuff to go put in. You know what? You should be grateful to the British Museum for doing that in China specifically, because if they hadn't, all of those things would have been destroyed by Mao Zedong and they would not exist in the world anymore. You know, so yes, the the British Museum and all that nonsense. They should send that stuff back. No. But now, well, yeah. yeah. The, the fact of the matter is that they are only existing in the world now because they were looted. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> just getting getting that off my chest because it's annoying. Um, what you're seeing here is the Mao Zedong greatly backwards cultural devolution communist songs, the red songs coming back it's in a the, big way it's the stuff we saw leaving china when yeah. we got to china this stuff was leaving and china was being progressive and changing mm. and we're regressing again so let's just we'll just Go run on. it so you can see that teacher looks like Mao Zedong. <laughs> Because this is the kind of stuff that they really were fighting to get rid of. Yeah. This stuff that they really didn't want to research. And this is 2022 and they're getting kids doing this. Uh, yeah, I know. I mean, if you just look at the, the lyrics, because they've been translated. Uh, yeah. Again, this is a work of the great translation movement. Yeah. Um, let's take a look over here. So you've got to understand, they are teaching little children um, <laughs> to say... sing. Dude is so... Anyway, yeah, yeah, is that fat guy, yeah, yeah. guy. Uh, sailing the seas depends on the helmsman. Um, okay, well, I just actually want to to read these sure, yeah, we can read these through. lyrics. Okay, yeah. sailing the seas depends on the helmsman. Of course, they're talking about Mao Zedong. Mao Zedong. Yeah, the growth of all living beings depends on the sun. 
rain and dew nourish young seedlings. Of course, it's all metaphors. It's talking yeah, about the young young people. And stuff. Um, conducting revolution depends on Mao Zedong thought. Okay. Hmm. It's a great thing for a little kid to learn. What's going on? One thing I do want to know is, you know, they always do this elbow thing. Yeah, yeah. What's that all about? It's just a communist pose. They always like the revolutionary shh, pose. What? It's a stupid pose. Because they, they always had their book in their hand oh, when they did that. Remember that? You think that's what it is? Book? Yeah. It's like are they trying to do it's elbow charging pumps? Charging forward. You know, where they're predicting COVID where people couldn't shake hands and they had to Well, the actual words behind it were all in a lot of songs were like charge forward, right? So, oh, right, right. Yeah. Probably that. Okay, so it depends on Mao Zedong thought. And then? That Laoban is fabulous, by the way. He is. Fish cannot leave the water. Melons cannot leave the vine. The revolutionary... What? Masses. The revolutionary masses cannot do without the CCP. So it's like, oh, fish can't leave water. Yeah. Melons can't leave the vine. You need the party to survive. You need, you need the CCP for the revolutionary masses, you know? Mao Zedong thought is a never set sun. So, you know, never remember they were like, sun, yeah. ev everything needs the sun to survive. Yeah. So Mao Zedong thought, this crazy man's like thoughts, those are the sun. That's what nourishes everyone and keeps everyone up. This is 2022, people. Current your argument. That, yeah, but current your argument works here. Yeah, it does. It's not a fallacy here. This is this is bad because this stuff left. This stuff was considered cringe. This stuff was considered evil. Yeah. It was kind of like this was our past, but we don't really want to talk about it. Yeah. That's yeah. when we were there. Mistakes were made. Mistakes Let's were made. Let's just it. not yeah. talk about it anymore. Bring it back to the forefront, making it part of curriculum, and also in, in uh, changing out Mao Zedong with Xi Jinping mm. for a new cult of personality. We're now living in very similar, almost worse than the Soviet Union, worse mm -hmm. than. Entering North Korea uh, uh, level of uh, dictator worship. Yes. And then also bringing in uh, xenophobia and Han chauvinism and nationalism to bring some elements of Hitler's Germany into it as well. Correct. Great combo, guys. Fantastic. That, te that, that teacher in the corner, you know, the let's just say the, the heavy eater. Um, he's fabulous. He, he is. He he's just amazing. But he looks like Mao Zedong. <laughs> he does. He if really you, looks like a pork boy. Yeah. If if you put the Mao suit on yeah. him, he would look exactly the same. I think know? he would institute a zero pork policy. Yeah, he would because so he'd eat up all the himself. pork. Yeah. That's a, a little quip from a new video. Yeah, out. it's coming out. It's gonna be fun. By the way, if you take a look um, down there, there's also office workers doing the same thing, yeah. and you find this in in companies. It's sure. quite common to do these kind of performances. But it's not just the little children. It's the office workers yep. too. It's like cool now, which is really screwed up. I mean, it's literally like, I don't know, as if Mein Kampf suddenly became like yes. back in fashion. This song Nazi is during salutes, the Cultural you know? Revolution when millions mm. of teachers, intellectuals, not just landlords, whoever you want to like, if you want to demonize them, sure. people that were in the wrong place at the wrong time or held independent beliefs were murdered mm. and paraded through the cities and the country went into famine during and the destroyed Great all their culture. After, or before and yeah. destroyed everything mm. in the process and tens of millions of people died and these are the songs being sung yeah now, now kids are being taught this yes. nonsense yeah. anyway you know that's just CC, ccp is gonna cpc or whatever yeah by the way again there's a there's this ridiculous thing they're trying to do and i need to just make this very clear to everybody you know CCP, Chinese yeah, Communist Party? You know it. We all know it. That's what we say. When we say the CCP, we mean the Chinese Communist Party. There are people trying to, and it comes from the Chinese government, trying to change the way people talk about the CCP. They're like, no, 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 no. It's CPC, mm -hmm. not CCP. Yeah. Dog whistle. Yeah. If you hear that, you know that this person's just a, a propagandist. Because yeah. what they're trying to do is say... Oh, no, it's racist to say CCP. You have to say CPC because that's how China wants to say it. Yeah. Chinese, so what, Communist respect. Party of China instead right. of Chinese Communist Party. Not that it makes any difference. No. The reason they're doing this is quite clever. It is. When you search CCP online, you will see all the articles from all the way back, right? Back to the 50s and the 40s or whatever. Yeah. You're going to see articles about the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party. And they're generally negative. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's be honest. Because it's not Human a very positive thing. The CCP yeah. is pretty bad. But if you try type CPC, 
What's going to come up? It's going to be the Chinese state crap that they put out. The rebrand. The the rebrand. It's a rebrand. It's a rebrand. You know, it's like the new Coke or whatever. It's just a rebrand. And they're going out there and it's like, so if you search CPC, you're going to see like, oh, rejuvenate, like poverty alleviation or, you know, like new renewable energy, all that kind of crap, right? That's what's happening there, okay? Is they want to try and wipe the slate clean. And they're trying to force people to not refer, even though they refer to them, to themselves as a CCP. You look at any old articles coming out of China, they call themselves a CCP. It's not some foreigners coming along and doing this. That's their no. own thing. It's a trick. It's smoke and mirrors. Yep. So when someone's trying to insist to you that it's not the CCP, it's the CPC, that means that they've been brainwashed. CP, it's CCP2 electric boogaloo, <laughs> yes. which is a huge diversion technique. It is. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And you think, what's in a name? I'll tell you what's in a name. Search results. Yep. It's all that matters. Yeah. Because you change a name. I mean, if you search a, a serial killer's name, just change the spelling of his surname and you're not going to see with another yeah, guy. Be someone else, <laughs> right? Exactly. You know? So it's curated yeah. examples. We've gone into depth many times about this. So I think we're the first people to bring this up. And it, it actually came up. Yeah. And I don't want to hark back to the old days, but when I was doing deep dives on TikTok, yeah. uh, there were people, like white girls, right, going out there saying, it's racist to say it's the CCP. You should say it's the CPC. Why not just use a correct name? It doesn't hurt you to do that. And I'm like, wait a minute. And you dig deeper. Mm. And it's a correspondent for CGTN. It's, yes. a, it's a stringer for Xinhua. Yeah. You find out it's all tied to the Chinese government. It's a huge disinformation campaign yeah. to get people scared to say CCP. So that from now on in their mind, if they ever search CPC, it's curated images, curated news articles, and curated information about the government from itself. Yeah, and Brilliant the propaganda. Campaign. It's a great idea. And if you fall for it, that's that's too bad. Yeah. Don't fall for it, guys. Anyway, let's move on to the next thing. And this, 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 like, red nonsense. Okay, now listen. Um, we're going to show you a, a Chinese um, electric scooter. By the way, I think it's a Neo. These are very... Is this a Neo? It, it looks like it's me. Okay. I could be wrong. But it's a very slick, you know... Um, I used to do a lot of electric bikes in China. Yeah. Because remember, like motorcycles were banned. Yeah. So I turned to electric bikes and I was modifying them and doing all sorts of stuff for a long period of my life in China before we started our big trips, right? So when I was in the city, you need to get around. You can't ride a motorcycle. Sure. Um, and China's not uh, not in the slightest are they the leading um, when it comes to the technology, but they're probably the ones that use it the most. Yes. So electric bikes are ubiquitous around china you see them everywhere they're used for deliveries you know they're used for uh basic transportation for a lot of people so like on mass like china has the most amount of electric bikes out there and they they produce the most amount of electric bikes and so on um but there is an unfortunate situation in china and that is quality control is bad yeah okay corners are cut all the time so if you're buying a dangerous product from China. I mean, something potentially dangerous, something that could be a hazard to your health. You have to be kind of careful. Yeah. Okay. Specifically when it comes to electric vehicles. Yeah. All right. China's making, has been making great strides with electric vehicles. Okay. And uh, I mean, I'm talking about, you know, the buses that you get in the cities like Shenzhen. And just market yeah. penetration. In yeah. General. Market penetration because they are willing to forego the safety. Yeah. You know, normally if you roll out a fleet of uh, electric buses, they have to have, you know, if you're going to do it in a, in a developed country, it has to have been rigorously yeah. tested yeah. for years yeah. to make sure that they're not going to combust or whatever. Yeah. And then they get put into service. But in China, it's like, hey, we're just going to put them into public service and then work out the bugs as sure. they go along, which we saw in the beginning with um, the BYD electric taxis catching fire, mm-hmm. being in accidents and burning people alive. We saw the, the buses catching fire and stuff like that. So you have to understand that this this um, progress, so to speak, comes at a massive cost. But it's a cost that the Chinese government's always willing to, you know, to pay. Um, so anyway, we just wanted to show you this. Don't worry, nobody gets hurt in here, for those of you who are worried about it. We don't want to show anything like that. But um, dude's riding around on his very fancy electric bike, and it suddenly just uh, kind of, you know, catches flame. But spectacularly, I mean, look at that. It's like a jet engine. It's better. I mean, that's just incredible. Inferno. Yeah, I, I mean, it's lucky he wasn't next to anything flammable because that would have been that. But um, the, the thing is, right, 
if you are going to be purchasing, there's a reason there. This, this is in Canton, but well, in, uh, in Guangdong. Guangdong. Sorry, Guangdong, because you can hear the, the, the Cantonese. The whole message behind this particular video, the reason that I wanted to show everybody this, why we wanted to show everybody this, is not to poo-poo Chinese products, okay? It's to, be, to, to arm you with a little bit of knowledge. Because here's the thing. If you're going to buy a Chinese electric scooter, for instance, make sure you're buying it from a local distributor. Okay, so like a local dealership that is in your country that is held to account. Yeah, the, someone that can be held. It's not that it's going to be safer. It's just that someone will be accountable. Yeah, because then it's in their best interests yeah. to make sure that they don't sell right. something that can kill someone. Right. But if you're buying off Alibaba or AliExpress or yeah. one of these and you're like, ooh, a cheap Chinese you know, e-bike, don't do it, guys. My big problem is that if you go look, the sheer amount of vehicles, electric vehicles that are allowed to be sold in America and abroad from China... It seems like there's no oversight because, listen, you can buy massive battery-powered vehicles mm. and it's sold indiscriminately yeah. and it has the potential to be this quality. Sure. And that's a massive issue. It's like the, the regulatory boards that are supposed to look at safety standards and all this stuff are some, for some reason not looking at electric vehicles, which I see kids riding around on electric stuff all the time now and it's cheap shit yeah. from, from uh, you know, Jijiang's wholesale battery group. Yeah, you know, exactly. it's like this random places and they put slap a sticker on called like, I don't know, go fun. Or yes. Something, you yeah. know what I mean? So, I mean, that's that's the whole point behind this clip is, like I said, not to poo poo Chinese products, but for you to make sure that if you are going to buy a Chinese electric vehicle of any kind, if it's a little kid's toy or something, buy it from like a responsible um, distributor. Yes. So go buy it from a big box store or something here in the States. If you're in the States, buy it from a dealership. Um, because yeah. if it burns, be careful. if it burns you it alive, then you can sue them. Yeah. Yeah. Like keep people accountable. And actually <laughs> it's good to keep dealerships accountable because yeah. I'm tired of dealerships buying a bunch of Chinese shit products mm -hmm. because it's what they'll do is they'll rebrand them. And I think it's unfair Yeah, because it's placing other dude, brands out of the market. Dude, there's a, a brand of motorcycle now being sold in the States called Genuine. Yeah. Genuine. It's called right. Genuine. Right. And I looked at this, like I said, there was a motorcycle and I saw it in a dealership when we were looking. It was like a genuine whatever. It was in freaking Philadelphia. And, and, and it's it's a shine ray. Yeah. We know these. We, because, we've been to the factories. Yeah, we, we, know we were doing I'm like, are. why is there a shine ray yeah, being sold a as a rays. genuine yeah. whatever? And then it's marketing. It's like based on Hondas, this and that. And it's like, no, dude. And it looks like it's made in America. Yeah. It's shocking. And a lot of people are getting duped. The I scooters that go like genuine buddies or whatever. And this has nothing to do with nation yeah. versus nation or whatever. I don't want to support this country or whatever. Yeah. I'm talking about being duped yeah. into buying a bad quality thing. Because guess what? We've seen the qualities. We went to the Guangzhou we trade show. We these things around. We rode them around. We did stress testing on a lot of different Chinese brands. Yeah. And we went to factories. And we know what the quality is. Yeah. And they're being passed off as American products. And they're being sold for the Bullshit. same price as like yeah. a, a equivalent I mean, Japanese it is bike. Cheap. It is cheaper. Yeah. It, it, like at the end of the day, it's a little cheaper. And that's what's pricing these th these other bikes out of the market. Yeah, just saying, you got to be careful. got to anyway, be super careful. Let's move on before we get all the... You know, genuine. Gen like Freaking genuine. Call your brand genuine. To just And just be honest, say this bike is made in China. It's not only is it made in China, it's a Chinese bike. Yes. It's not anything else. It's not no. like, oh, we just assembled there. Yeah, no, no genuine Chinese product. Be careful. Mm. Anyway, you get yeah. the idea. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need to watch a burning bike anymore. Yeah, it's a burning man, but it's a bike. Yeah. All right, let's move straight on. We're just going to have a big Q&A after this, so we're just going to yep. get get it done. We'll move on to Worldview now, where we talk about everything in the world, specifically with regards to China. That's right. Okay, what do we got here? Um, so, there is, this image is going around China. Mm -hmm. For the people that weren't tuning in live, Yeah. and Chinese people were getting mad. Now, can you look at that picture, right, mm -hmm. and look at it? And tell me, why would a Chinese person get mad at this photo of just some fans at the World Cup? Why would they get mad? Well, because no one's wearing masks and everyone's having a good time. Ooh, interesting. So there was genuine shock, and it was pretty interesting mm -hmm. to see genuine shock and awe on, with Chinese netizens that we're seeing huge gatherings of people at the World Cup in Qatar, right? Yeah. And no one's wearing masks. Yeah. And they're allowed to hang out. They're allowed to watch. They're not allowed to drink beer. No. They're allowed to watch. They're... What's the point of going to a yeah, football I, game I if, if no you can't idea. drink beer? Like, I'm like, what am I going to do? Isn't that what Twiddle my thumbs do? and actually care about the game? <laughs> anyway. Dude. Long story short. Yeah. They're upset. And it was really interesting to watch because mm -hmm. they have been for three years yeah. in this 
paranoid state where if you get COVID, you're going to die. Your life's upended. You're going to lose your job. You're going to be locked in your house. You're going to, everything is, is screwed up. And right? the state narrative has always been, yeah. listen, you have to put up with this because the rest of the world is dying in droves. Yeah. COVID has wreaked havoc amongst all the other countries. And we are the only safe country because we do the zero COVID stuff. Yeah. And it's to the point where we keep getting asked questions by Chinese friends and relatives and even other foreigners living in China. They're like, dude, is, are you guys okay in America with all the zero COVID and killing everyone and all the, you know, the, the vaccine nonsense? And everyone's so concerned that our lives are so terrible. Meanwhile, we're back and partying like it's 1999 for more than a year now yes. where everything's normal. But right. in China, it's not. Right. You have to have masks. You have to have social distancing. You have to, unless you're queuing up for a test, obviously, then you just sure. crowd in a mass and spread spread disease. But, you know, it, it's a crazy bubble that people are living in there. And it, seriously, we've had, okay, let's be honest. Um, there are a lot of foreigners who live in China that don't really like us. Yes. Okay. And that's because we tell some some truths that they don't want to acknowledge. Yeah. And on top of that, maybe we make their lives a little harder. Yes. Because, you know, people look at us criticizing the, the CCP and then they might say, hey, look, foreigners don't like China and then take it out on these guys. Yes. It happens. You know, I understand why they don't like us. A lot of the people that don't like us have been reaching out in private. And so we're not going to, you know, we don't want to embarrass you or anything. So they reach out to us in private and they've had it. So they're either like... We are so sick and tired of um, this the zero COVID thing, or they've just recently gone back home and they reach out to us and they're telling us, we had no idea that it's actually open like this. Yeah. There are some big name shills who work for the Chinese government who left China to go and travel. Mm. The whole point is that they, they're like sucking off the G bar of the CCP. This has happened to like at least four big uh, YouTube channels that are China based. Yeah. Where they're like, China's the best, China's amazing, and they keep going around doing state media stuff, but their feet are doing the talking because they're all they've all left. They're yeah. like, hey, we want to do travel you're still, shows. You're still shilling, but yeah. you're not even in China. Anymore. They're like, oh, we love China so much, but you know, I have to go back and visit yeah, family. Yeah, or yeah. oh, we love China so much, but you know what? I, nah. <laughs> I want to travel and do stuff. Yeah. So what you're saying is the the zero COVID policy is so bad that it's even chasing out the most optimistic top. Yes shills who yep. absolutely suck off the Chinese government all the time. They can't handle it anymore because they can't travel. No. You can't travel domestically in China without massive amounts of hassle and the potential of being locked up. You know, so they're leaving. They've left. Some of the biggest pundits for the CCP and Huawei and things like that are now currently bouncing around Thailand. But they're still doing Philippines. Chinese propaganda. Isn't it crazy? And promoting zero COVID policy. Yeah, but they're not there. No. Or they're doing van that's life. That's why they left. Exactly. Yeah. Or well, they're, you know, doing whatever. And they're outside of China having a great time, you know, having the freedoms, but still saying, oh, but the zero COVID policy is good. Dude, shut the hell up. Go back to China if you're going to say that. Show the next clip. So also a World Cup. You guys mm -hmm. are pumped for the World Cup. Our viewership just skyrocketed when we brought up the World Cup, by the oh, way. Oh, interesting. Right. Yeah, what can you tell me about this? It's really interesting. Have you guys notice this clip? You're watching a goal. Right? Being scored. Just notice. Why is the crowd? being censored and blurred that makes oh, yeah. absolutely no sense I'll, I'll get a freeze frame so you can see like let's get a freeze frame where you can see the crowd so what's that okay now before we get called misinformation agents or so on yes we understand that this was not everywhere in china you could sure. still watch the world cup yeah. on many channels and from yeah. many services in china and see the crowds yes but this is through streaming okay right. Um, and what happens is there's always a delay in live streaming for China, of course, yeah. because there has to be, they have to be ready to censor. Yeah. This is because when that whole thing happened where people were like freaking out about everyone having a good time and not wearing masks, right? This was the solution. Yeah. Don't let people see them. They censored the crowd. Yeah. And so on this, this particular stream for this particular game for the, from this particular channel, this happened. Yes. Okay. And people are like, did they really blur the crowd? They did. They really blurred this the This is crowd. real. This is not made up. No. Okay. But at the same time, uh, to clarify, this was not everywhere in China. It's not like China censored all crowds on no, all no, channels. No. This, this is one channel. This is one channel. And presumably it happened on plenty of other ones sure. too at a, at a specifically given time through streaming. 
Okay, and it's a knee-jerk reaction to everybody suddenly like, why can the rest of the world? It's almost out? like they didn't want to answer the government. They'd be like, why did you show those people without masks on? Yeah. That's gonna make people revolt, you know? Yeah, and it did. Like, there's a big stink online. Like I said, people were upset. They're like, why do these people get away with this? They they don't have to wear masks. Yeah, because you know they keep hearing from the Chinese government that it's so bad and everyone's dying and and you know like it's a terrible thing happening overseas. It's racked with COVID. Everyone's like in a in a bad way and all that kind of crap. Um, but when you see the reality, because this is this is something that the Chinese government can't really censor is the World Cup. Yeah. Right. Yeah. When people see this actual reality, they're like, hang on a second here. Like, this isn't fair. Yes. You know? And it's not fair for Chinese people to not be able to just enjoy life and continue on with life. You know? Yes. Living in this horrible thing. Correct. Anyway, um, I want to make a correction. Oh, you want to make a correction about the genuine company? OK, go ahead. What is it? So. The Genuine Scooter Company is a Chicago-based company. Okay. Right? And the Buddy line of scooters, they're called Buddies. Yep. Genuine Buddies. They are made by PGO Scooters of Taiwan. Oh, okay. But so they're, they're, they're Taiwanese. That's fine. Taiwanese scooters are amazing. Well, but Yeah, okay. So the yeah. scooters. All right. However, mm -hmm. they're one motorcycle. Yes. The G400C. That, that's the one that I saw. Is the Shine Ray. That is manufactured in China. Mm -hmm. uh, so this company, this American company, works with a Taiwan distributor or a Taiwan so OEM stuff. PGO, PGO, which makes you know that's that huge conglomerate. Yeah, uh, they do Piaggio in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. They do all that kind of stuff. Taiwan, look, you can't like. So that's good. Uh, that's I, I can say the Buddy Scooter line is probably great. Yeah. Um, the Shine Ray, however, is the not the Shine great. Ray. Though that's what shocks me is that this. That's why we we're confused. That I only knew about the bike. Mm. So it looks like they're working with a Chinese company, or I mean, a Taiwanese company for their scooters in America, which I think is great. Yep. Um, probably don't say it's an American thing though. It's, is I think it genuine? Like, yeah, I, genuine. I'd like to the know. Genuine. That's genuine. Yeah. Genuine just, is an American company. I got you. And they make Taiwanese scooters. And they, they a... distribute Taiwanese scooters. Okay. They have one motorcycle in their line. Which is the G four hundred C, which is yeah. made in China. I just thought it was very deceptive the yeah, way it was too. being presented me because too. in the showroom it was like genuine whatever G four hundred. I was like, dude, I know this bike. I test, yeah, I test rode this bike. It's yeah. it's quality it's the parallel is bad. Twin. It's bad. It's a really bad bike. It's based off a very old Honda um, design. Yeah. Which, but it's like a bad knockoff. Yes. And then, but in the actual like brochure thing that they had there, they were like, it is. It is like Honda technology, basically. So according to us, by the way, just so there's no, we're not being deceptive. It looks like, I mean, I can vouch for the PGO stuff. Mm -hmm. the, the genuine buddy scooter line is good. Sure. And their motorcycle from China is bad. Because yes. we know that we have tested that yes. exact motorcycle. We have. Unless they've made some drastic changes they would have had after to they change, bring it back over to the US. They would have had to change the metal they make the engines out of and everything for it to be better. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, just saying. Just wanted to be upfront about. And that. We're just using it as an example of yeah, yeah, how sure. the deceptive marketing happens. Sure. You know? um, anyway, let's anyway. move on. So yeah, this is this nonsense over here. <laughs> with the, the World Cup. It is. Yeah, you can't. I mean, you can't make that up, right? No. You know, there's another reason they censor crowds like this. It's happened before, is if somebody holds up a protest sign or something. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention that. Yeah. This is a dual purpose. Yeah. It's to stop, because there's all kinds of protests that people make political messages at world events, as they should. Everyone's like, keep politics out of this stuff. No. Mm. If this is a world stage where you might be able to eke some information into the Chinese crowd or North Korea or whatever, yeah. right? Yeah. It's a good opportunity to do so. Yeah. So do your protest stuff. Anyway. What if you had political banners here that said Xi Jinping is uh, the greatest greatest threat of to the world or something yeah, like this yeah. or has like some like the CCP is evil or something like this, right? Mm -hmm. That would be a nightmare because yeah. the Chinese government has, has effectively told their populace that, yeah, the rest of the world's the enemy, but nobody hates the Chinese, the Chinese government. We are the good guys. You know? right, if right. you see other people doing that on a world stage and it's allowed, people yeah. are like, they're allowed to do that? Yeah. That's crazy. I know, right? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Guitar. Sure, sure. <laughs> anyway, uh, I do have one more thing, but I kind of want to say the production. Big topic, what is it? It's about Belt and Road. There's oh, a lot right. of stats I want to go through, though. Okay, so then we'll leave that yeah. for next time. So I guess it's time for us to hit our Q&A, guys. Yum Cha, this is where we get to relax. We answer your super chats. I get to loosen the tie. We get to chill, just have a chat. Um, and 
Yeah, let's do it. And yes. by the way, we leave this Yamcha open for the weekend. We take it out on Mondays. I know we're doing this a day earlier, so it'll be be here tomorrow and the weekend. Yeah, it'll be up. We'll um, take it out on Monday. Yeah, but we take it out on Monday. So and if where you can are, you find it? Oh, oh yeah. Oh. The, here's the thing. If you watch um, our show and you miss the Q&A because you're watching it on Monday or Tuesday, you can always, doesn't matter what tier of patron you are, you can always catch the full thing. We put them up there. So uh, patreon.com forward slash ADV podcast. And another thing mm-hmm. before we sign off. Yeah. Very yes. important. Run that again. Okay. We have, if you, you know, you're watching the show right now, right? Mm-hmm. We have a whole nother show on Monday. Oh, yeah. yeah, we do. A whole nother show on Monday. Yeah. Patreon.com slash ADV podcast. If you join the Xiaoban Ho tier level. Yeah. Then you get to watch the show that we can't show on YouTube. It's yeah. all the stuff that we can't talk about or show on YouTube because of censorship, because it's too risque or because sure. it's controversial. We show that on Monday and it's a secret VIP club that we have. Yep. You guys come join us there if you want to. It's a great way to support the channel. Super fun. We always have a lot of fun there. Yeah. Um, and yeah, anyway, it's time for us to uh, say goodbye to those of you who are not watching us live or on the weekend. And uh, stay awesome if you're, if you're leaving us now. And it's time for us to get started so 